Welcome, welcome, welcome to day nine of 30 days to 2,500 bucks. Okay, if you're new to my webinars, this is how I get down. I'll do the presentation first. If you have a question, something burning on your mind, go ahead and ask the question. And once I come out of the presentation, I will answer your question in the Q&A section of this. So if you don't have a pen or paper, you might need to go get one or you can use your digital device because you may want to take notes and there are activities. This is an action based webinar. Every day, there is something for you to do to propel your business forward. Just know that. Just know that. <laughs> Here we are. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. Sounds simple, but by saying this and pledging this to yourself, I mean, you don't know me anything. I'm just a guy on the internet, net, the interwebs. But as you condition yourself to get better, you will get better. Okay, for those of you who were up to uh, day eight, how's it going? This is what should have occurred at this juncture. You should have made sales if you were pushing. Now, if you were brand new and don't have a business and you're still in that phase of what do I sell? Who do I talk to? You're going to have to tighten it up. You got to make some decisions because typically I would rather that you come up with one of the ideals on your sheet, one, one of the ideals, and make a mistake and like, okay, learn from that mistake. Action, 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 action. You have to get started. You have to move forward. Um, there are people who've been taking strides and making money since the first day of this course. Now, I have a lot of business owners, people who have businesses, eBay or eBayers, Amazon people. Um, you know, a lot of folks are taking this course and they're taking these principles and using them for their existing businesses. Now, so far that I've heard, this one person has done thirteen hundred bucks so far. So we're he's over halfway mark to his 2530 days and this is on top of what he already does because the thing is when you have a business and it's just you it's a lonely road you should do continuing education but when there's only you and it's an 8 to 12 hour day sometimes just when you're done you don't really feel like researching the damn thing and you got to force yourself to put in an hour of research time or learning time you have to do it because this, the marketplace changes so quickly, so quickly. Also, you should have a list. Your list may have 10 people. It may have 250 people. It may have 1,000. But you should have a list by now and something to work on. Because the list is like oxygen to your lungs. That's how important the list is to your business. You got to have it. And there are many people that don't have a list. I remember one weekend when we were having their warehouse sales. I used to do headcount every weekend. Like I would see people, greet people at the door like, hey, how you doing? Hey, Zeus, <clears throat> what's going on? We had these Brazilians that came in every weekend and they would bring friends. Oh, my God. And I remember one weekend I didn't see any new faces. So having a regular customer base, having a list is super important because there's going to be times where you're going to hit just this lull where there's just nothing happening. I mean, you, you're marketing, you're doing stuff, and it's something just where the, the forces of the universe just say, nah, ain't happening this week, partner. And it's weird because I don't, it's just, there are so many different spheres of influence that are happening. And sometimes these, flares, these spheres just disconnect. It happened in the storage auction business. There would be these periods of droughts, and it wasn't tax season. We'd be out for weeks, and it just wasn't nothing to buy. He was just like, okay, you just scratch your head. You just have to power through this stuff. Because I'm telling you, in any business, it's coming. You're just going to have those periods where it's just not going to be clicking. You're not going to get new customers, and you just still. But see, this is where having a plan, and this is where having a program, and this is where having some type of guidance will help you. Because I remember. Guidance and mentorship is very important. My grandfather said something that was very pivotal and it's helped me with relationships. And he told me when I was like 12, he said, it's going to come a day <clears throat> that you're going to be with that girl 
and you're not going to see her the same way and you're not going to love her. And what you're going to think is going on is that it's over when really you're either stressed out. There's too much going on, too much time spent with the kids. And what you and that woman need to do is go somewhere and reconnect. He told me that while I was 11. And damn it, it happened. And I was like, okay, well, Amos McDaniel said, and he was right. So just like, you know, with relationships, there's going to be a time that you're going to disconnect from your business. And it's just like, you're going to feel like, oh, I need to give up. Maybe I need to do something else. You're going to be looking across the fence at that other grass, or you're going to be looking at that shiny new car. When really, it just may be, you need to refresh up. You may need to, I actually had a friend who wanted to sell her business because she was so, it, it kind of ran on autopilot. And I just said, no, hire someone, hire someone. And you know, You've, you've entered retirement already. Got her a strong manager. Had to double the salary of the previous person. A uh, person made almost six figures more money, so they covered themselves. She got an extra bonus, and she don't have to go to the office. She's retired. She's retired. She's got a thriving business. You know, she may have to hire another person. Some may have, she may have to jump in. But for the most part, she was in, like, uh, Argentina last week. She's retired. So th- there's a lot of things that you can do to build your business, to create this income for yourself. And you just have to learn how to manage you. That's a big, 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 big part of it. Managing you and making that matriculation from an employee mindset to an employer mindset. So for those of you who have done the task, because there was a two day break because people were behind. I was looking at what people were watching and I was like, okay, this thing is going too fast. Just a quick announcement. There will be a break this weekend. Uh, may do it Sunday, may not, but we're going to do the day, Thursday and Friday. No Saturday and maybe not a Sunday. I haven't decided, but I will email you in advance. Then the following week, we will go Monday through Friday, maybe Sunday. So there's definitely going to be some built in breaks because definitely this is more intense than I thought it was. And that's the reason it's beta. So I can make those adjustments. Damn, this is what I love to do. Yeah, the bull's gone. I had to. I had a taste for some steaks, so I had to slice them up. This is your uh, exercise for the night. Do your daily numbers, your weekly numbers, your monthly numbers, and your quarterly numbers. And I'll be like, for those of you that have a business, it's like, huh? For those of you who have a business, some of you are still going, huh? Essentially, this is what I used to do in the storage auction business, and this kept us from getting in a lot of trouble. I used to run our numbers daily. I used to run our eBay sales daily. I used to run our Amazon sales daily. Check all the freaking bank accounts and PayPal daily. I spent 30 months, yeah, 30 minutes a day doing numbers every day, seven days a week. Because if you try to do your numbers quarterly, you should have them quarterly. And that's that, that's for trending later on. If you're doing your numbers daily and weekly, you're going to see trouble long before someone who's doing them numbers monthly. You could be knee deep in the red and if you do your numbers monthly you could be out of business and not know it until they start you know that that chime happens for the funeral march so get in the habit of looking at your numbers all of the time because typically when you get a good grasp of your numbers you really know what's making your business work and what's not making your business work because when you or on top of your numbers. And I'll give you an example. This was about the third year in the storage auction business. We were doing about 80000 a month gross sales. Once again, that's gross sales. That is not net profit. A lot of people throw around the big number and you're like, that's what they know. That's not, that's what you generated. That's revenue. That's not net profit. You could make 80 grand a month and have like a $5,000 profit. So revenue, gross revenue is nothing to get excited by unless it has a high net margin. If there's no high net margin, you've got problems. Uh, In the internet age, a lot of people like to run low margin business where they're getting like five, 7%. If you're not getting 20%, you are flirting with disaster because Remember what I just said about the droughts? Remember what I just said about, you know, sometimes things just don't happen the way you think they're going to happen. You run a thin margin and you have a bad month. You could literally be out of business. So get to the fact, you know, and if if you're new, don't let your heart be troubled. You will start off the right way. Like, say you're doing eBay. okay? You have to. 
because a lot of people think eBay income isn't predictable. I would disagree. When you're doing your numbers and you trend for three months to six months, you're going to get some metrics data that will help you predict your income, even with eBay. Yes, eBay, because we stay within a five to ten thousand, yeah, five to ten thousand dollar range month after month. Then that was the variance because your income is going to be directly um, proportioned to your listing. The more you list, the more your money is like you, you will reach a magic spot where you have to list certain things. And if you're selling like a same the same item month after month, uh, it's going to even be better. So weekly numbers, you know, once you get your first 12 weeks and you start looking at the numbers, if you've got wild swings, like one week you did 12,000, one week you did five, one week you did two, you got to backtrack and like what happened? Because when you can look at those numbers and you can look at the sales data, you're like, oh, we had a marketing promotion. Oh, you can start to find out what makes your business purr. But when you're just like, I don't want to look at the numbers. No, 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 no. I got money in my bank account. I paid all my bills. I'm good. I got money to buy. You get in trouble doing that stuff. You get in a lot of trouble doing that stuff. So you, you got to become an egghead and all about the data. Uh, my business partner was an accountant. And that's one of the reasons. That, I mean, in the beginning, I was like you. I'm going to be honest. I was just like, God, do we have to look at that? We got money in the bank. Look, I got 10 G's in my pocket. Well, looking at the numbers at 10 G's is not actually 10 G's because we're going to need eight to pay the rent and this and this. So you really only have 2000 in your pocket. Huh? <laughs> you know, that was just a mind blowing day. And I was like, what? Because I was feeling really frisky, you know, $10,000 in my pocket. I'm about to go out to the auction and just balling. No, I went to the auction and bought a whole bunch of cheap units. And one of the units ended up being a jackpot unit, which changed the whole month around. Because there's times you have money in your operating account, but you haven't looked at the other stuff. And some of that money may have to go where it needs to pay core bills. But learn to love your numbers and be really friendly with your numbers. Make them purr. Make them go Because when your numbers are purring, you're purring. You're purring hard. All right. Day nine, the math of profit. For, uh, for your business to have a bit, for you to have a business, you need something called profit going in your business life. That's the money left over after expenses. That's what I was just alluding to. Uh, some people really confuse gross revenue with profit because you hear it all the time. I made 40000 I made 100000 I made 400000 last year. What was your net? That is the most important number. If you made $1.5 million last year, but your net was 0.5%, you were efficiently out of business running on fumes. Now, if you made 1.5 million and your net was like 750, you caking off. You got a killer business. Killer. 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 And those are rare. Uh, most businesses fall between 10 and 30, 30%. Because when you start scaling up, you're going to have costs. But don't be one of those people just saying, ooh, I made $10,000, but really the profit was only five hundred. dollars but I'm not going to tell anybody because that doesn't sound as impressive as $10,000. This was one of the best jobs I ever had, and not because selling cars was fun. Selling cars actually sucked big monkey balls that were dry. It was horrible. It was horrible. But... I stuck it out because essentially they bring you in on the draw, right, for a month. And after that, you're 100% commission. Or if you know the law, you can go ahead and clock in on the time clock. And if you're working bell to bell, which is like 12-hour shifts, then your minimum wage will be actually be more than your commission. And they'll have to give you that. But a lot of people don't know that. So I was doing bell to bell and I was, I was punching that damn time clock because I was getting paid every week. I didn't tell too many people because a lot of newer guys, some of the other guys, they didn't even know that. I was like, yeah, there's a time clock back there. You had to ask <laughs> to have that thing and fill it out and all this stuff because nobody told you shit. They just brought you in and gave you a draw. But uh, I met my first Uncle Tony there. And um, I remember how I lost my, I lost a the sale. There was this couple, elderly black couple. 
and they sent me out there because, you know, we black and they were supposed to relate. And I go out there and I meet with them and I talk to them and I spend two freaking hours with these people. They get ready to go and I was like, hey, you know, okay, y'all have a nice day. Here's my card. I'll talk to you later. Then this guy, Rob, comes running out of the, he's new. He doesn't know what he's doing. Come on back. Hour and a half later, those mofos were driving down the new Cadillac. And then grandma, grandma, little sweet grandma, you know, I'm looking at, she's like, you should have tried harder. Man, that changed me. That changed me a lot. So the next day, I'm talking to Tony, and this couple comes in. And it's a, and it's a white couple. And Tony's like, go over there, see what you can do with them. <laughs> So they go over, and this time I've got like a fin on my back because I'm a shark. I was like, if they're buying a car, they're buying a car for me. So I got them. I started talking to them. I was former medical personnel. They were medical. This was when I was going uh, just out the military. And we were just chatting them up, and I got them in there, and I sold them in about three and a half hours a car at full boat retail. I made $1,500 off them. And then Tony... That night came in and he was like, that's a motherfucking gross. I mean, you got them with the this and that. I mean, he was looking at the invoice. He's like, how'd you do it? I was like, I asked for it. I just like, I told him as soon as I met him, I was like, you're buying a car for me today. I was not going to have that crap that happened to me before. And, you know, it was just, um, I put, you know, the percepts of race in there. Because sometimes people think that they can't sell to another group of people because they're not of that tribe. And that is some bullshit. But I made more money that day than I had in the previous six weeks of working there. And then, you know, Tony sat me down. He pulled out this blunt pen and he showed me the, you know, where and may, you may have had this done to you where they write numbers down. And this is this is a mental technique. It's, it's pretty, pretty slick. So you're writing numbers down, and each time you write down a number, you fold the paper over, and the paper gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And you're like, it's a time clock. As that paper gets smaller, it, in the customer's mind, the deal's disappearing. The shit worked for you. So, I mean, it was crazy how well that worked because he showed me how it did it, and he said, you know, this money you're about to get, you need to go get yourself a good watch. You need to have your shirts dry cleaned. You need to get yourself better shoes. And you'll never go out there and run after a customer. You will walk with dignity. These other guys, they go out there and run after customers. They scare them. Walk with dignity. You look like money. You'll get money. And I was selling. I, I never sold the most cars there. I was never like the number one in terms of actual sales. But I could sell one car a week and live because I could get those grosses. And the thing is, that's when the mini deal came out. Like, you know, you sell a car, spend two hours with a customer, and you get 75 bucks because you got beat down on an invoice. And I just learned how to really talk to people. I learned who I was dealing with. I learned a lot from that job because many times a person would come on a lot and they would want that high-end model, but they can't afford it. So... They're not going to buy that from you unless you're a hell of a salesperson. They're going to go around the corner and buy it from someone else after you did all that work. So I always started people off at the bottom. I was like, I know what you told me. I know what you told me. But this work our way up because you put someone in a snazzy car, their pride is not going to let them say, I can't afford this with you. They'll go somewhere else. So just the fact that I would sit down and I was just push certain cars because they had a lot of gross or they had like a special rebate from the factory. There was so many things that salespeople just didn't know or pay attention. They were literally hanging on the freaking wall. You move the Chrysler minivans. They had a bonus. It was like $500 bonus for the salesman. All kinds of stuff that if you didn't know, the dealership kept. That's why I came up with this saying, don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the motherfucking rules so you can win. And when I learned the rules of gross profit, I was making more money and not working as hard and looking pretty snazzy. I took that experience from my uncle Tony. His real name was Tony. He was an older guy. I think I was like 23 at the time. He must have been 50 something. And I left that place and went to sell Highline BMWs. 
because that experience just taught me because it's a different cell or it was back then because I haven't sold cars in years. But it was a totally different cell. BMW guys, we didn't even come out of the dealership. We just sitting there and like, oh, you want a car? Come on in. Now, enough of Uncle Tony. The myth of mass sales with low prices. You know, if you haven't heard of the Loch Ness Monster, Nessie, that's her up there. You know, everyone thinks it's a fraud. Uh, this is the predominant thought of internet sales. Stop thinking you will rule the world with low prices. You, 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 this, this is one of the things that gets people in trouble. You'll, you'll see it frequently with um, YouTubers, like, you know, buying this, we're working on volume. What's going to happen when you do this is your house is going to look like a pigsty. You're going to be just overrun with shit you're not selling because it's going to lead you to think that at some point stuff will sell you hold on and to a degree that's true and if you can warehouse this stuff inexpensively it's not a bad deal but just going out buying a bunch of cheap stuff and working on the volume angle guess who you're competing with everyone and their mother everyone in them that's what everyone's doing because you have to learn how to create value you really have to learn how to create value for your customers and what you're doing there are people who will pay. There was something I posted on my Facebook page the other day, and I'm a member of that group where people go to Target versus Walmart. There's one Walmart in my neighborhood. Actually, there's two. There's two Walmarts in my neighborhood, and there's 10 Targets. I will not go to Walmart because I know I'm going to have to wait in line. I know I'm going to have to deal with some stuff. I know I'm going to have to. Last time I went to Walmart, if you're a Facebook friend, I put up the woman who was wearing her thermal freaking underwear with some brand new Jordans. I don't know why Walmart attracts those people, but it does. And I go to Target. I don't see that shit. <laughs> I don't see that shit. Call me an elitist if you would. So the whole point is Target has substantially higher prices than Walmart, yet many people refuse to go to Walmart. I shop more on Amazon, which has higher prices than I do on eBay. So when you learn how to create value, you don't have to think that you have to sell everything dirt cheap. You just don't. Now, you got to learn how to be the man versus being fucked by the man. Because that's what that whole, well, you know, it happens frequently in the publishing realm. Put your book on Amazon. You know, sell it cheap and let the volume. No, 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 no. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Marketing a book it can be one of the hardest things you've ever done. And if you operate on volume and you're not in one of the popular genres, you're not going to make any money. I've seen so many people crash and burn. Then I've seen some kid or some couple go into romance and poo poo on romance if you want to. Romance is the largest genre of all publishing. It runs publishing. Romance. That's why Fifty Shades of Grey just took off. Women who read romance control the publishing industry. Yes, romance. You know, stuff where the dudes like, my chest is about to explode. Yeah, this, they run, that runs it. That's why I write dirty books under a pen name. I've got like 10. They're not that big. They make me like three, 400 bucks a month. I don't even advertise them. They just find them. So understand, you can create value and you got to become the man versus being fucked by the man. Small, medium, and large. All right, I got a thing for Batman, okay? Sue me. One thing that kills people is trying to play one part of the game. Like when someone goes on Facebook and like, I bought this for ten dollars and made five hundred bucks, and they get like super excited. That tells me that doesn't happen that often in their life. It's a great win to get something for a buck and make you know a lot of money. It's a great win. That is not the normal standard operating procedure of your business. If you are trying to create a business on base hits versus, I mean, home runs versus base hits, you don't have a business. So when we had the warehouse. We had three different price points. We had 4,000 square feet. Everything was a dollar. Then the next 2,000, no, next 3,000 square feet, that was men market stuff. And then the smallest section of the warehouse was the high-end stuff because that's how stuff sold. And you you got to figure out what works for your business because, you know, I'm going to use the perfume lady. Say you have 
some bottles of perfume that are like 30 bucks. They cost you 10. They're, they may be slow sellers, but you can go out and buy this stuff for a dollar and sell it for five or six bucks profit. You just, you know, once you get your numbers and figure out what your people are buying, that's how you plan your inventory. You might be able to move more of the higher price stuff. But a lot of times sales, you know, they're not thinking about it. It's like, hey, I'm just going to be the bargain basement specialist or I'm going to be the high end specialist. And high end can work if you have the right pedigree. It can work very well. But if you're going high end, you're going to have to look high end. So have more than one price point. You know, if you never sold anything expensive, try it. Just try it. And with eBay, let's just give you a word of caution. Be very, very careful with that. Because if you switch categories, <laughs> eBay tends to be like, we don't like that. You make us nervous. You make us nervous. And we're going to hold your money because we're nervous. It's not because you've done anything. No, Nave. You have not done a damn thing. But we're nervous. And we're going to hold your money hostage. So you got to be real, real careful with switching categories. Uh, I recommend you have three to five eBay IDs. Now, understand. If one goes super funky, they may cancel all of them. But if you have some issues with negatives or stuff like that, you can just stop using one and switch to the other. Try one ID where you sell nothing but expensive stuff. If you're selling Rolexes, you're going to have to do it because this is how I how in people look at stuff. Like if you got an ID and you're selling Rolexes and you say you have a feedback of 50, right? But you, all your feedback is Rolexes. Okay, I'm going to have trust in you. But say you have a feedback of 5,000, right? And you've been selling like wine cork toppers or some shit like that. And you got a Rolex in the mix. I'm going to be kind of like, what does this person know about Rolexes? Huh, I don't know about that. I'm going to be a little hesitant. I'm going to be a little hesitant. So you can develop a high-end eBay ID with a few feedback because if you focus it. So you can have one eBay ID that you're just blowing shit out. And you can have another one that's more mid-market stuff. And you can have another one that sells the same thing. You can stack this any way you want to if you really think about it. What most people do is try to find some cheap shit to sell and hope it sells. <laughs> There's no plan. It's like, we we made money. <laughs> it will not help you. Now, understand, low margins. And there's a difference because going back to the perfume thing. If you buy the perfume for a dollar and you sell it for five, you have incredible margins, <laughs> incredible margins. It's a low price point, but it's not a low margin. Know the difference between low margins and low price points. Low price points is you sell something for a dollar and it costs you 75 cents and you make a margin of 20. That is not exciting. Uh, that will not produce a profit erection in any porn movie of profit anywhere. So say you sell something for 20, but you got it for two or three dollars. You know, that's high margin stuff. So you just understand, like if you're doing high volume and low margins, that's the race to the bottom while holding flickering lighters while dousing gas. You will not be in business long. There's just too many people playing that game. And I've had this conversation in various e-commerce groups. And it's like, well, you know, we net out like 6% profit. Just the leverage is just not exciting. I mean, it's just the markets can shift. And I'll give you an example of some stuff that happened to us on some pre-owned inventory. We were rolling out these light bulbs. Bought a unit was full of brand new light bulbs. The light bulbs were going for like, you know, 25 bucks on eBay. And we had like a few hundred of them. So we just put a few up at a time. Something happened. And then the price of those bulbs went down by half. I, I don't even know what I just all of a sudden was like, what the hell? We were getting more. And for, fortunately for us, you know, we got them super cheap. But if we had bought those in a wholesale setting, we would have lost our ass on them. And it was just a matter of months that changed. So there's a lot of things that go on. A company comes up with new product line. They're going to they're going to reduce the old stuff to get it out of the warehouse, which if you're holding it. Remember, you make your money when you buy, not when you sell, because the price that you pay for it when you buy never changes. That's locked in stone. Price you hope to sell it for can change all day long. So there, there's a lot of stuff that you have to really think about. But 
think about more than one price point and don't get locked into that low end stuff because we had an eBay ID when we were doing the furniture on eBay first before we did the website. Yeah, like 30 feet back and we were selling one or two bedroom sets a week. 700 to 1500 bucks. So, you know, you can sell high end stuff. Trust me on that. This is another exercise. Yes. If you're if you're looking like this guy with the gas face, I'm gonna shame on you. I'm gonna bitch slap you. What is your 90 day profit margin? Once again, if you're new and you don't have a business, you you have no idea because you you haven't been in business. So, but if you've been in business in the last year and you don't know this, you are really flirting. You got you got those lighters and they're flickering and the gas is the fume is rising. I want you to take your last three months of sales, add them together, subtract the expenses. And total up what your profit margins are. And it doesn't matter if one month it was 25, the other month was 35. Add them up and that's going to be your average profit margin. Now, what's funny, if you continue to do the same things to produce that margin and, you know, I'm putting there. If you're under 30%, your business is in trouble. And I know people are like, well, what are you talking about? Well, last few months, include the holidays. You should have been making money if you had a business for the last 12 months. If you didn't, something's wrong. So... If your profit margin is under thirty percent, you got some problems. You got some problems because if you know seventy five cents, eighty cents of every dollar that you make goes towards expenses, you can't have bad months. Because if you have two, let's just think about it. do the math. You have two bad months. That's two months you're not making any money. Most of your money's going towards expenses. You're out of business. It's just like that. I mean, healthy profit margins are not something to be ashamed of because you says, well, you know, I don't want to make I've seen people in groups. It's like, I don't want to make my product too expensive. Well, is your product worth what you're asking? You're thinking about trying to be a nice guy. As one of my roommates used to say, Derek shop, don't be a prince when you don't have to be a prince. And, you know, really, really look at what your, you know, your margins are. You've got to know this stuff. So you got to know this stuff. You have to know it because when you know your numbers and your numbers are clicking, you can sleep so well at night. When you don't know your numbers, you rarely sleep well at night. Even if they're good, you're just like, well, it looks good. Got money, but I don't know. That's right. There's two exercises that are part of this session and they both deal with numbers. Now, this is a big, big part of your business. Now, let's talk about that magical number because I've heard it mentioned by so many YouTubers. $10,000 a month, $10,000 a month, $10,000 a month. Every one of them is a lone ranger. They work out of their house and they're just like, I'm trying to make more money, I'm trying to make more money. The reason uh, they stop there is not a money issue. It's an infrastructure area. If you're working out of your house, you're pretty much working for the most part, in a very inefficient space. You might make it efficient by doing stuff or getting shells or developing your own methods, but it's still going to be a house. There's still going to be door jams. It's still going to be not as efficient as a wide open warehouse. So their infrastructure is the reason that their money stopped. You know, and they'll have like a month where it's like, yeah, we did 20,000. Oh, it was Christmas. <laughs> so that's going to be a big problem. Uh, one man shop is going to top at about one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand, and that's if somebody who's really on their business. That's someone who's really on their business. And what I've seen and people I talk to, profit is usually fifty to one hundred and twenty k. Now, with one hundred and twenty k being very exceptional. Now, Amazon FBA does turn this around a little bit because as a one man shop, you can do you know half a million to one million. And you know, profit at 150, 300,000. But understand, Amazon FBA gives you leverage because if you use wholesale and you've got the money, you never touch freight. You never go out. You just like, hey, you send them your tax stuff and they ship the stuff straight to Amazon's warehouse where it just goes into the system. So you get to that level, you don't even have to touch stuff. And then you get to a business that you can run from anywhere in the world. But you got to have some money to play that game or build your income level up to where you can buy those type of things. Because uh, one of my clients does about 1.5. Now, it's not just him. There's three of them. There's actually three of them. And they're fine with Amazon FBA, but they were looking at doing eBay and they were looking at doing some private label stuff. And the thing is, 
Amazon is the king of the hill right now because if you take a product and you put it on Amazon and if it's selling well, Amazon's going to get all of those metrics and what they're going to do is go out and get it if they can. So he's looking, they're looking to create something that, you know, will be a little bit more of a challenge for Amazon to get. And the way it is now, it is really, really a game of always being on the lookout for deals and looking out for stuff to make your business float because if you sell on Amazon, understand they're going to take your data and use it for their benefit. You know, a lot of people I love, you know, I love Amazon. I shop there all the time, but I want you to just be really aware before you get on with Amazon FBA, some of the things that can happen because, you know, I like it. I recommend it. But in full disclosure, there is and it's not bad stuff that they're doing. This is just business. Uh, same thing's going to happen to you if you, you know, with another furniture, like furniture store or anything. People are going to shop your website. They're going to shop your products and they're going to try to get them and sell them for a less price. That's just business. But know that Amazon FBA is probably the only thing you can do unless, you know, you got a big old Ponderosa spread and you've got like a garage or something that you can do as a one man shop and make that kind of money. Trying to do that on eBay? Possible. But you're going to kill yourself. You're going to be working 12 hours a day. Because if you're doing eBay, guess who's doing all the shipping? You. And if you're making a lot of money, you're doing a lot of shipping. So the big deal is to get your numbers up, you're going to have to have a better infrastructure. And when you start getting towards a certain income range, you know, 200, 300, 400,000, you need to look at getting the space out your house. Two things are going to happen. One, you'll get your house back. Two, you will create a separation between work and play. You know, your work life and your home life. Because when you work from home, there is no separation. There is none. None, none, none. That's why um, at times I just take breaks and days off and just leave the house and go do stuff. And sometimes I'll just go to the coffee shop. Not so much to work, just to look at what's in there. But when you reach a certain level and you just can't make any more money, it's not that you're stupid. It's not that you're not working hard. It's just you you are trying to stretch out in a very tight space that you can't stretch out in. Everyone that's gotten a warehouse has seen a bump in their income. Everyone. Because it just creates more efficiencies. So if you are at that point where you're stuck at a certain income level and you're working from home, that's the problem. It's your infrastructure. And infrastructure is not always a warehouse. Uh, infrastructure can be getting a virtual assistant. Infrastructure could be getting. Um, yeah, I was getting a little getting ahead of myself. Getting virtual assistants, hire a part time employee. Now, let's talk about that. Everyone wants to do the equity gambit. Like if you list 100, you no, no. If they wanted to make money from equity and profit, they'd be doing what you're doing. They wouldn't be looking for a damn job. Pay them minimum wage, eight bucks an hour, ten bucks an hour, whatever you want, and hire them for hours worked is money earned. Do not do you know you can throw a spiff out there if you want to, but everyone that tries the equity gambit's like they don't want to work. If they were like you, they wouldn't work for you. <laughs> it's not, they're, not, they're like you, like, yeah, you know, if I list a lot more, I'll make more money. They would be doing their own thing, they're not gonna work for you. You want someone that's just happy to get a paycheck and just call it a day. That's what you want. As I said, you can lease a warehouse. And uh, these add-ons can improve gross revenue by fifty to 350000 Just depending on what you sell, who you are, and what you do. Now, this is something that no one talks about. A rapid influx of sales can bankrupt you. I know you're like, what? We're all looking to make more sales. When your sales suddenly spike up, associated costs. And grow fast in your profits and sometimes uh, we had a month we had some really good units we maxed out our credit card shipping shit yeah we were getting money from paypal but it was just like we're shipping shit faster because that thing is paypal used to be a little weird sometimes you get your money in two days sometimes it'll be four and you really become acutely aware of how long it takes for you to get your money when you're waiting on it because you need it you're like it's still not there. It's still not there. And just like, you know, just for the record, if they want to put your money in your account, they may be doing it differently now because I don't use them. But if they want to put your money in your account in 12 hours, they could. <laughs> they're, they're not trying to. It doesn't take four days. There's a reason they're holding on to your money. So at any point, if they feel nervous, we're feeling a little nervous, so we're going to hold your money. 
That's what that's for, to give them all the opportunity to hold your money. Because uh, someone that's new to eBay, he sold it, he transferred the money, and kids like, how long does it take to get the money? I said, should be two days, but you know, you could be in that little area. He's like, no, I'm good to go. Money should be coming. He never got that money. 21 day hold. So understand, if you are really looking to scale up your business, really, really think about all of the other costs that are going to go with a lot of sales. And I know it sounds like, what? I'm barely making money now, man. What are you talking about a lot of sales? What I'm telling you is, as you go through this course, as you do these things, there's going to be a potential for you to make a lot of sales. And it can embarrass you. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I use Gumroad. I'll give you an example. Like, I don't put a lot of the new stuff. I haven't put any new stuff on Amazon. I didn't put anything new on Amazon in 2013. I'm really not planning on putting, well, the dirty books, but that's different stuff. Because uh, it's a little price point item. But I'm not looking at putting anything on Amazon. But say I go on the news. Say I become, I get some real good exposure. I, you know, Gumroad is robust enough to handle the traffic that Amazon can have. So when you start thinking about this stuff about, you know, building your business, actually think about a lot of sales. Think about a lot of sales because typically if you have your own website, once you get to 80, 100,000 hits, you may have to go to an independent server. They'll tell you, you can get as many hits as you want to because they know most people are not going to get those hits or ever run into those problems. That's the reason for shared hosting in the cloud. But you have a month because there was a lady I was tracking. Her blog went viral and her site shut down. Because you're getting so many hits, it overloaded her bandwidth. They shut her site down. They de-indexed her. So there's a lot of things that can happen when you grow fast. And, you know, that's the goal. But you have to be prepared. And also conditioning your mind for some one of those kind of events is something to bring it on. It's like, okay, what would I do if I get like a thousand sales? And you create those processes and you'd be like, well, dang, we're making more sales because you're moving mentally to that spot. Now, <clears throat> this is why I have you doing all these tasks so you can get numbers. That's right. So you can get those numbers because without the numbers, you're flying. You're just totally blind. You, you're doing stuff, but you can't connect the dots. You know, you're, you're being successful, but it's just like you're kind of on edge. Once you go through this stuff and you, you build your list and you get your numbers, you're just going to be in a more confident position for your business to grow and for you to be happy and for you to make a lot of money. Start small and build. I mean, there's nothing wrong with starting small. And when I say starting small, you know, whatever small it may be to you, you can grow very, you can grow a lot in a year. Because when you start small and let's just say you make a mistake. You make a mistake on a small piece of grass. You just take your foot, wipe it on there, and nobody see it. But when you got the whole football field and you make a mistake, oh, he should have caught that. Everyone sees it, and the impact's larger. So this is why you're doing all this stuff. This is why these tasks are going on, because it's to get your mind geared toward collecting numbers, analyzing your business, and looking at it in a different way. Now, this is bar bar none, the best way for you to make money. I've said it. I've done a course on it. Set a daily sales goal. Don't care what you're selling. I don't care if it's a dollar a day. You can scale a proven concept by setting a goal. Set a goal with eBay. It's like, well, I want to make 50 bucks a day on eBay, which is uh, 350 bucks a month. I mean, a week, which is 1400 a month. That's gross sales, not net gross sales. So you set that goal and you start getting into the numbers. It's like, okay, I listed four items. That's not getting me there. Oh, but I listed eight and it's getting me 50 to $70. Oh, that's how that works. By setting these goals and, and pushing yourself and exploring what you can do, you make your business more robust. So with that, we're going to get into the questions. Let's see. <laughs> okay. All right, Josh. I swear I always managed to park close to the entrance. I thought it was because I drive a Camaro Z28. Okay. Damn. 
I've done 16,000 in sales. We started this at a 60% gross profit mark, profit of $9,600. My weekly hard cost of $1,600. My PayPal and eBay fees of $1,700. That leaves me a net profit of $6,200. Last year, in those same days, I did less than 8,000 in sales. I believe it was what you said in day three that transformed me. I realized I was making all my money searching for inventory and buying it. I outsourced everything else and I'm up to for searching and making more offers than ever. Oh man, cool. I'm not reading all that because I was giving that I was giving away some of your business stuff. But uh okay, let me write this down. <laughs> 16,000 gross sales that's it's it's about um it's about systems because I, I would say working with Renacrate was one of the best companies because they were sales driven that's where I got a lot of this stuff from because they didn't play it was like 200 phone 250 phone calls a day I mean 250 phone calls a week you should yield this amount. I mean they had a formula and when you develop a formula you can free yourself up from a lot of things. Uh, let's see. Tony Marshall. Uh, first day, is it possible to get an overview of the exercise assigned previously? Yes. Join the 30 days to $2,500 Facebook group. It's either $29.95 or $200 lifetime membership. <laughs> I know. Walmart. Romance is porn for women. It is. Uh, this is Brian. In my experience, people often will trust a product that they pay good money for. Low price can eliminate a fly by night kind of odor. Things, uh, oh, emanate, sorry. Things sell to better buyers who are less trouble when they're higher priced. I mostly get burnt. I know that on eBay killed me. I mean, I don't know how many people, a five or seven dollar item, and understand they want their item, but will lose it. And then I'm selling to someone a four thousand dollar bedroom set, and it has a scratch. And I hire a local company, go out there with a furniture repair kit for three hundred bucks, and then they like leave me positive feedback. But um, it's it's weird, man. It is just weird. I still have nightmares from some of those customers. Uh, Eddie. Uh, how do you find products at wholesale to the resale? Uh, you have trade shows, you have websites. If you're in a city that has like an apparel mart, this is a place where you can go look at stuff and buy wholesale. But with the apparel mart or any type of merchandise mart, you're going to have to have a business license. Uh, they're going to have to have a business card, a business checking account, and either a business debit. Because, I mean, this place here used to be ridiculous, what you needed. You had to have five things. And if you didn't have one of those five things, you couldn't get in. Uh, Michael, so Amazon gets the products that you're selling. I'm trying to understand how to sell on this. Uh, any chance on writing a book on Amazon? All right, this is the deal with Amazon. Amazon is a very smart company run by a lot of smart people. Amazon is a technology company. And that's what they do. They're technology based. So if they see a product that's doing really well, they're going to go out and buy it and start selling it. This is going to happen. As for me writing the book on Amazon, <laughs> excuse me, as for me writing the book on Amazon, probably not anytime soon. I did Amazon, but I didn't do Amazon like a lot of people are doing Amazon now. You know, like I lived and breathed the storage auction business. You had some people doing Amazon to that level. All right, this uh Chris. Some businesses, especially marketing and fundraising firms where I used to work, will hold on to your money for a period of time to make profit from the interest. Imagine making a business, making a business, making a few percent off two million in accounts with even higher profit CDs. I mean, they, you know, that's supposed to be illegal, but I still believe that they figured out a way to make it happen. Uh, Jeremy, December, we bought four units after labor and truck costs. Margins were 58%, and then January, we bought 12 units, and we're at 67% after labor. What margin were you looking to hit when you were selling? We consistently stayed between 70 and 85%. Uh, David, how different do you do your numbers when you're talking about digital products? Do you treat yourself, your own time, like an expense? It's slick for you to charge for the beta access to the audiobooks. <laughs> Hey, I said the webinars are free. I didn't say anything about the recording. All right. Now, digital is really, really different 
because just starting at the beginning, like um, my hosting costs and stuff, I mean, my costs are like 5% across the board, you know, from unless, you know, like said, do a book and get it edited. That's going to be 800 to 1200 bucks. Then the cover, of, you know, that stuff is a cost if I'm doing something, but my margins, 90 some percent all the time because it's because you're creating your own stuff. And once you have the infrastructure, like say you get a website, or you get a hosting account, that's a sunk cost. It doesn't change. And you can use it for as many things as you want. But it's real, real different. It's very different. Uh, Chris, there are two storage auctions on the trails on the same day. No, it's taxing. I think it would be worth my time to try one of the trails. I can't really say. Uh, there are some people who are still getting stuff in the midst of jet tax uh, season. Some people aren't. You you just got to go out there and see. All right, this is from Josh. Serious question: What if it seems like your busy is uh, your your busy is doing okay, but not growing? For the past three months, I'm averaging six hundred a month. My only expense is internet connection. All my income is from repeat clients through though, and I'm having a hard time getting new clients though i'm working on a new side business you will have to launch a marketing effort you'll have to figure out how to get more clients because if you've got 600 dollars a month coming in and it's from repeat clients that says you're doing a good job so you've got to figure out i mean when i was in outside sales this was how what happened to a lot of sales people you spend a third of your time getting new leads and new customers a third of your time making a sale and a third of your time managing the sale what happens is is once you got a sale a lot of people devote their time to managing the sale and forget about acquiring new customers and then when those sales are over they have to start from scratch it's a feast of famine cycle but if you learn to always dictate some time to marketing you will be in a better situation <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't see this. This this business is so different from anything I've ever done. And one of the reasons I love it is. Um, I can. Come up like, OK, just the, the new product, the hustle. Well, hustle numbers. Yeah, it's a new product. It'll take me 30 days to do that. And I can sell that for years. Uh, and it's the thing is, since I'm not doing Amazon. And like I said, when you know, get back to the ebook stuff. The covers I make for me are different than the ones I do for Amazon because Amazon, they have to be different because that's how people shop you. But since I do so much marketing of marketing me, Conundrum Up Publishing, I mean Conundrum Media, that is a little different ball game. Uh, this is Deanna. Glendon, my partner and I are in conflict over what to charge for spaces at our new flea market schedule will start in late May. Experience in our area, everybody wants to sell, but they just don't want to pay for the space. I want to make money, not break even. Any suggestions? Okay, sure. Whatever your space you're renting, you go ahead and like say, okay, your rent is twenty five hundred bucks. Just throw a number out there, and you're going to come up with twenty five spaces. So to break even is a hundred dollars per space, right? To make money is $200 per space. So take whatever you are pay you're paying and you got to factor in electricity, whatever else stuff you're going to, you know, uh, provide and put something on top of it. Because I know I was paying 160, 130, yeah, 160 for a booth years ago. So, you know, you might be able to get that 200 bucks a month. And I'm, I'm just throwing numbers out there because, you know, your rent may be cheaper, but that's how you do it. Uh, Nate, yep, something I learned recently. Wanted to blow out some old products on eBay. I was giving these people the best deals ever, and they've been nothing but headaches. I don't know what it is, man. It's crazy. Uh, Chris, do you have to have a business license or any other criteria to get people for internships? Nope. <laughs> pimp on, pimp on. Uh, this is Susan. Hi, Glenn. I already do 36,000 annual sales on eBay, but do not want to go into another platform. 
and putting together books, etc. What do you think of website? Uh, I will have to look at it. I don't know. Just send me an email and I'll look at it. Authorized Net is great as a payment processor. They've been around forever. <laughs> Marcy, thank you, Glendon. I'm the one to buy cheap and hope. That's about to change. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Brian, have you utilized any kind of voice to text applications to reduce the amount of time it takes to write out outline your ideals? Let me give you an example of why not to use voice to text. Uh, great question. I used it on some books and it creates a nightmare for your editor because voice to text, like take the word here and here and there and there doesn't seem like a big thing, but you will spend so much time with your editor cleaning that stuff up unless your voice to text is like 95% accurate and it will also mess you up. Um, I can write depending on the subject matter, 800 words to 1600 words in an hour. And I just had such a nightmare with that. I mean, it may be different now, but I've gotten away from it because it creates so many problems for, you know, cleaning up your work later. A uh, hundred dollars for whole space electric included. Well, how much is your rent? That's what you're going to be driving that off. You know, if you got, you know, if that covers your rent and gives you profit. Cool. Manny, how much will a one hour Skype session cost me? I have some questions as I what to think I need to do to monetize the things I now do with money. I am four fifty an hour. Uh, Jelani, what's up with the internship offers and the gig sessions of Craigslist? Are these people really trying to get people to work for free? Yeah. All right. Let, 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 all right. Let, let me explain you the power of business ownership. Okay. I'm going to do this for my daughter. Um, I'm going to make her an employee in my company and write down whatever the hell she needs me to write down for this thing she wants to do. You go to a company and do the gig and you get that person as a reference. You do it two or three times. You got three solid references. They will give you the best references, whatever. In my opinion, it's worth it if you don't have any skill sets. But um, yeah, I haven't done an internship thing because anyone that I have worked for me, I have specific purposes and I pay them. But a lot of people do it. Okay, 100 bucks each event. Once, you know, once again, if that covers, you know, your cost and gives you a profit, that's cool. But if, if it doesn't, you need to make more. Uh, Brian, have you considered writing your own how to write and market your own ebook? Uh, I did and I canceled it. There's like a million of those books out there. And this is the problem with writing those books. The information that I can give you today can be factual. And in six months, it could be obsolete. Amazon has changed so many times since I started in 2009. Uh, they also hide because there's there are people who devote a lot of time to debulking or analyzing their algorithm and there's websites devoted to this it's just i would rather teach people how to start a business based on you know proven business concepts versus that because there is a book i would recommend i can't think of it at the name because it's in my actually i don't have my uh, kindle on me but it was written by these guys uh the self-publishing podcast <clears throat> it's a great book because they tell you what they did and they're very successful. And it's a lot of what I'm telling you. Okay. Uh, that looks like this. All of the questions. And we're at the five o'clock hour. Cool. All right. I will hold on for a second. But while I have you here, <clears throat> if you haven't get, let's see. If you haven't gotten it, <laughs> I'm going to hit you over the head with it. Uh, because I get these questions all the time. Like the th thirty days to twenty five hundred bucks, the Facebook group is going to go on for a long time. So if you want to join, two hundred bucks lifetime is your best option. Your other options twenty nine ninety nine and twenty nine ninety five. That's a per month, and this little deal here is two dollars a month for the next two or three months. I may get the book done this month. It may take me. Yeah, it may take me a month. It may take me three. So at the most, you'll pay is six bucks. Or a lot of people have actually been paying more than that. So thanks. And uh, 
this is what's going on. This link doesn't really change. I'm going to just change the date <laughs> and this won't change. So that's how you sign up for tomorrow's webinar. Tony Marshall or wholesale source list is proof. I didn't do a wholesale source list because I'm more in the creation mode. I know how to find that stuff, but this is the thing with wholesale. You need to have some money. And I'm not talking about a thousand or two or three thousand dollars. You need because this is the thing. If you buy wholesale, and unless you just get a sweetheart deal, you're gonna be say the item cost on Amazon is 35 bucks, right? You're probably gonna be 12 bucks for it, and Amazon's gonna get 12, so that's 24 dollars. Then some other costs. So you may be netting out at ten dollars, and you're gonna have to put this money out and wait to get reimbursed. So you're looking at having like five G's just to play that game. And start making decent money very quickly i would suggest start off with some cheap stuff first see if you even like it before even getting uh, locked up with wholesalers and wholesalers are very funny some will not sell to you unless you have a brick and mortar some will not sell to you if you don't have your llc business license uh, some will sell to you if you just have a resale certificate so there's a lot of things to consider about going the wholesale route okay it's 501 i'm going to shut this puppy down if you want to record the sessions, be sure to join the Facebook group, and uh, I'll be here tomorrow at 4 p.m. All right, this is Glennon. Thanks for everyone for coming out. I really appreciate it.